Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here, hope you're all doing well, and welcome back to another GT Sport video, oh yes. Here we are then, at the Nürburgring, no, unfortunately not the full size Nordschleife, we're just at the GP circuit today. This is this week's Daily Race B, and as you can probably see by the amount of Lancers in this lobby, the Mitsubishi Evo is actually one of the best cars to use, which is a shock horror, because you never see this car up in the leaderboards it's so rare uh, it's just got no it's got no grunt as soon as you go out of fourth gear it's unbelievable so real real surprise when i'd launched onto this uh onto daily race b and i saw that it was at the top just just couldn't quite believe it but anyways for today's video then we're going to have one race around here and i'm also going to show you my qualifying time that i set for this week's daily race a nice little qualifying guide at the end um and trust me you'll want to see it because yeah Absolutely one of my best laps ever, I think. Anyways, going into turn one then, as we prepare ourselves for the Mercedes Arena, uh, we're going to go side by side with the Spaniard JKT. Uh, he's in the Jaguar F type. Of course, like I said earlier, this Mitsubishi Evo has got absolutely no top end. So as soon as the car's in the slipstream, your boy is in big, big trouble. Anyways, turn three through to turn four. Track limits on the outside, it just seems like you can completely ignore them. Um, very much like Lewis Hamilton and a little bit of Max Verstappen uh, at this weekend's uh, Bahrain Grand Prix. But we go through turn five. Turn six is a early turn and actually you want to click the inside of that corner, power out and hit the green stuff on the left hand side. You'll see when you go down that hill you want to maximise every single gear uh, in this car. So literally turn three, max it out, turn, um, turn three, gear three, max it out, gear four, just absolutely revving it to its limit and just finding out just what speed you can do before the car actually tops out and then it's GG boys you've over revved it and you just lose a ton of time. Going through the Michael Schumacher S's there nice and tidy through there preparing ourselves under the Gran Turismo sign look at that green stuff on the right hand side not clipping the apex through turn 11 as well as I'd like um, that's actually turn 10 I think this is turn 11 excuse me but anyways you can see third gear you just want to change before 100 miles per hour, around 98 miles per hour is what I'm doing. But so far, this has not been exceeded, it's not been very clean in terms of what I know what I can do. So straight away, I'm having to go defensive. We're going to go side by side, but thankfully, uh, the brakes on the Evo are absolutely fantastic. So we're going to go through the chicane here, managing just to hold on to that P1 as we go and almost complete our first. So we've got one corner to go and we've just managed to hold off the Spaniard. But the question is, can we hold off the Spaniard? on the straight. It's going to be very, very difficult. You can see it's about four temps away. It's got that slipstream. You're going to see that gap just close down immediately. It's so much difference in top end speed. Just on that straight alone, he's made up two temps on me there and you can still see him on the radar. In fact, you can see him so much, he actually gets a little bit too close and gives us a little bit of a, a kiss on the rear bumper there, but we'll, uh, we'll ignore that. We'll crack on and we'll see um, if we can try to pull away from it once more. You've got to be extremely careful not to go too wide there. If you go all four wheels over the white line, as you'd expect, you will get yourself a track limit penalty. Just like I'm going to do here, actually, on the exit of this corner. Um, I think it's exit turn four there. Um, so much for ignoring the track limits, really. Um, I'm going to whack myself with a half second penalty um, for my troubles. I think I've done that many times before. I'm not quite sure why I got one there. Maybe because I went a bit, little bit too... Um, a little bit too off track to be honest um, I think there's a little bit of um, it's not gravel but a little bit of a tarmac or curb just starts to form at the end of that and I think if you're not back on the track by that point uh, it is, the game's going to slap you with a half second penalty so now we've got the trouble of we've managed to break this, the slipstream of the Spaniard but now we've got to go through the rest of his lap and try and pull a gap here um, big enough so that when we serve that half second penalty we're not going to get overtaken um, I think when you do the penalty on this one it's just before the hairpin at turn seven so you have to be extremely careful um, just not to get overtaken because there's a massive opportunity someone dive bomb you uh, into the hairpin and yeah that could be a big opportunity for our Spanish friend behind us and maybe his compadre as well the uh, GP Oscar as well so maybe he might have a little uh, stab at us as well breaking 100 meter board going through the chicane once more I hate this I hate this corner I hate these two corners I should say um, just awful, just just absolutely hate it. Um, the track limits on this game are so 50-50 sometimes. You really have to take the mick going through there, and it's just such a it's a big risk for very little reward. But you've got to do it if you want to be quick. 
Uh, we cross the line, we do a 203 flat, not too bad. Um, I think at the moment in time, I think that's just eight tenths off what my qualifying time was at this moment in time when I was recording this. Um, so not too shabby. Really hitting uh, the apex beautifully there, going through turn one. A massive pain in the bottom in terms of just trying to absolutely nail that corner. So easy to outbreak yourself, go wide. And if you break too early, you're going to go on the dirt and, yeah, you're just going to completely mess up the exit and just... Yeah, you'll probably get a penalty as well just for your woes. Right, we're going to go through the um, Mercedes Arena once more. You can see there, that's what I mean by the stuff on the left-hand side. Just didn't touch it this time, I don't think. I think we're clear. Um, but, yeah, we've still got that half-second penalty to, to deal with. We go through the first sector as well. Two temps up, so we are purple. Looking tidy through turn six. Touching the green stuff on the left-hand side. Lovely stuff. Maxing out third gear. And here's the penalty marker here. We're going to serve that half-second penalty. Now, is that enough? Yeah, well... He's absolutely nowhere near us. I'm not really sure what's happened to the Spaniard there. He must have had some sort of issue earlier on in the lap. Otherwise, or maybe I was just doing really well because I went two temps up in the first sector. We were looking on, we were looking tidy for a 202.8 in the race, which would, um, yeah, not too shabby. Not too shabby. So the day I was recording this, this was on a Monday. I think I did this race about 12 or 1 o'clock, I think. Um, interestingly enough, my qualifying time at this point, I think you saw it at the start, was a 2.02.7. Um, which is which is pre pretty handy, I think. Or it might have been a 2.02.3. Not quite sure. Um, but yeah, it was a handy time at the time. Um, but you're going to see just how much you improve um, as we jump onto the second half of this video after we um, complete this lap. So we're going to go through the chicane here for the third out of four times. You can see it. I do okay here. But through this bit here, I'm going to go, and it's just on, it's just a pixel. I've just got a pixel over. You need at least one wheel on the curve. I've got a pixel over, and that is going to slap your boy with a massive one-second penalty. Now, you're thinking massive, one second. That can't be true. Trust me, in Gran Turismo Sport, one second feels like an eternity. Because it's not just that one second. It's breaking and slowing you down for a whole second. So the brakes are slammed as you go through that penalty area. So it's just a whole second of the game breaking for you. And then you've got to get up to speed. So in reality, it's much more than a second. You can almost double that. So I've got to try and get that two-second buffer. But I don't really have many corners to go. As we go through turn two, really difficult corners to get right, to be honest. Again, look, you can see... Oh, no, as soon as I go too wide there, I just knew straight away. Yeah. Oh, poop. Okay, so now I've got 1.5. So this is really going to be painful. And the gap is only 1.6 currently. It's really, really not good. So when we serve this... We're going to have to make sure. I think I'm just going to have to go defensive straight away, aren't I? Let's, ma let's nail these two corners in. Turn five and turn six. Let's make sure we just maximise everything we can out of this car. Clipping the apex beautifully there. Revving the hell out of uh, gear two, three and four. So we're going to serve it here. Slow right down. I'm going to have to go defensive. Just watch that gap. Look at him. He's closing in like there's no tomorrow. There we go. On the inside. Now, I'm amazed. He goes around the outside. I'm amazed he's not managed to, to stick that. I don't know what it is. He went wide and then he just kind of stopped. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. Uh, but yeah, thankfully we managed to keep it. Schumacher S is then for the last time. This is going to be incredibly difficult for our Spanish friend behind us to get a move done here. He's going to have to get a move done. He'll have to go up the inside going into this corner here. Turn 10. But he decides to get the... He decides to stick to the outside. I thought he'd go to the inside and go for a big boy dive bomb. But he, de he decides against it. He goes against it, which I... Was very, very surprised against once more. Um, I didn't really maximise the exit of that corner as well. And you can see there's P3 there just flashing away. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, as we go through this corner here, getting ourselves ready for the last chicane. This goddamn last chicane. Absolutely hate it. Now, I was a little bit cheeky here. I made sure that I absolutely just slammed on the brakes. Just doing 40 miles an hour as I go over the first curve. Basically leaving that, that chap with nowhere to go. Um, just a bit of a... Uh, textbook move there, just parking it on the apex of the corner, so he has to slam on his brakes and he just goes into the back of me and he's got nowhere to go, and we managed to defend our position and we managed to get a P1 there, despite getting basically two seconds worth of penalties um, completely all my fault, there's no doubt about that, but uh, yeah, that's something we've got to learn and got to avoid, so make sure if you're doing this race this week, that you do avoid doing that, but this was um, yeah, I really enjoyed this race, and I hope you guys are enjoying this race as well this week, there's quite a good uh, variety of cars that are decent here so you don't really have to go with the Evo uh, I think the De Subaru is really good as well and the Jag F type but anyways let's crack on with the qualifying guide to show you my best lap I think I've ever done in this game because I think there's only one little mistake I made but apart from that I think I absolutely nailed it and I'm super proud of this one so let's crack on with it then okay 
lap of the Nurburgring GP circuit. First braking point is just as the dirt starts to appear on the left-hand side. Braking really, really hard now, all the way down into the second gear. Rotate the car, clip the inside of that apex nice and tight. Get the car to the right-hand side, into third gear. As soon as you hit the third gear, go to the left. Let go of the throttle, just ease it. The only mistake I made there is I did not get my foot down early enough. That chap goes really wide. As soon as you're about to maximize third gear, brake, slow down, second gear, inside the apex on the left-hand side. Go over to the right one. Uh, right corner there into third gear just make sure that you maximize the track limits as much as you possibly can as you go through the Schumacher Stadium um, anyways Mercedes Stadium I should say break point here is just as the white lines come together here break hard into third gear middle of the apex get to left hand side as soon as you can break um, into second gear clip the middle of the apex on the right hand side use as much as the green stuff on the side as you can Maximize third gear as you saw as I did in the race. You can really get up to about 98 miles per hour. Ridiculous. As you get two wheels on the side of the curb on the left hand side, brake hard. There are two ways to take this. You can brake a little bit earlier, you can brake late like I did and go in for a late apex. Now he does look quite ahead of me there, but you can see my exit was superior, so that means I can really catch up with him as we go up the hill. And our middle sector there is 104.9. This is looking really, really good. To go through the Schumacher S's there, just trying to minimise the steering input as much as we possibly can to minimise the scrubbing off any time that we can. Um, braking just before the 100 metre board or the green kind of, I don't know what you want to call that on the right hand side. Two wheels on there, two wheels on the inside curb, into third gear. Now as soon as you touch the white stuff on the left hand side, turn in quickly and then aim for the middle of the apex on turn 11. Nice smooth exit, again, just... I keep saying it, but third gear is absolutely vital. You need to rev the hell out of it. Same with fourth gear as well, all the way up to 128, 129 miles per hour. Getting ready for this pain in the bum chicane. Braking at the 100 meter board, slamming the brakes as hard as you can. We're gonna go all the way down into second. After 50 meter board, turn in. Two wheels on the curb on the left, two wheels on the curbs on the right. Up into third gear for a bit more stability. If you keep it in second, you'll find a bit of a pain. And we're going to gain a tenth there. Look at that massive time gain there. Braking hard inside of the corner. Accelerate out as soon as you can, but make sure you do not hit the gravel on the left-hand side. And we're going to cross the line there. And we're going to set ourselves a 201.9, which at the time was fifth in EMEA. And it was first in the Americas as well. And I was absolutely chuffed. I genuinely do believe... If it was not for the lack of acceleration um, going through turn two, I was just I just wasn't you know eager enough on the throttle. I, I think we would have got you know would have been right up there, and I mean like top three fighting for the like number one place. We were so close that whole time, um, you know, less than two tenths off first place. And you see in America, this is taken from today when I'm doing the voice service. So this is on a Wednesday. Uh, you can see that would have been good enough for a top five in the Americas, which is just. Still, which is awesome, but I promise you at the time, uh, we were talking about it in my Discord, it was enough to be first in the Americas, uh, which is just crazy to say, really. I couldn't quite believe it, but uh, hopefully you enjoy that, guys. A bit of a qualifying guide. It's not something I usually do. I, well, I haven't done it in a long time, but I just feel it might be handy for you guys if you're struggling with this week's Daily Race B. Uh, really interesting track combination with the Group 4. I didn't think it would work, but it really does. But uh, yeah, anyways, hopefully you did enjoy that, and if you did, please leave a like. Subscribe if you are new around here, and I'll catch you for the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Ta-da.